These days, it's not unusual to have to fork out six, seven, eight hundred dollars for the latest and greatest Android has to offer, at least if you're buying outright. But that's chump change compared to what we're looking at today. This is a $2,000 smartphone. It's built and powered by Huawei and designed by Porsche Design, along with the bragging rights that come with that brand and a price tag that is exclusive by design, you'll get a tantalizing, though slightly frustrating glimpse at the future of smartphone technology. I'm Alex from Android Central, and this is our review of the Porsche Design Huawei Mate RS. The name of this phone invokes Porsche's high-performance racing sport vehicles, that's what the RS stands for. And while that car analogy doesn't translate perfectly over to the smartphone world, it's clear this has been positioned as the pinnacle of Huawei's early 2018 lineup, a step above even the P20 Pro. On the inside though, in every way that matters, the Mate RS pretty much is a P20 Pro. Most of the spec sheet is a carbon copy of the Huawei flagship you can buy today for a more reasonable 900 euros. So what's different? Well, for one thing, you get a ton of storage. I've been using the $2,000 base model with 256 gigabytes. There's also an even more exclusive 512 gig model that sells for an eye-watering $2,600. Then there's the design, which it's hard to comment on without saying just how much this resembles the Galaxy S8 or S9. I mean, it's uncanny, it even feels like a Samsung phone in your hand. Not a bad thing, just a little ironic given the focus on design in this device, because this design is one that's been popularised by another company. Porsche Design tells us they're focused on symmetry and soft lines in this phone, with the goal being to create a device that feels like a singular, seamless object. You don't get that kind of symmetry in the P20 Pro, but in the wider smartphone industry, plenty of competitors have beaten the Mate RS to the punch. Nevertheless, this is a beautiful phone. The back has a super shiny, polished gunmetal finish beneath its glass panel, similar to what we saw last year in the HTC U11 Plus. For the Chinese market, there's also a vibrant, fiery red model. Around the front, the Mate RS has a markedly curved display, with a more pronounced angle than most Samsung phones. That makes certain swipe-in gestures easier to pull off, but it also means you get a bit more colour shift around the sides of the display because of that wider curve. The screen itself is a P-OLED panel made by LG Display. In any other phone, that would be fine, but frankly, its quality is not what you'd expect from a device this expensive. Though its resolution is higher than the Samsung panel in the P20 Pro, Colours are more muted, particularly reds, and there is a slight colour shift into cooler hues at wider viewing angles. This isn't as bad as what I've seen in the Pixel 2 XL, which also uses LG's P-OLED, but it is still there. But hey, if you're a display purist, at least there's no notch to deal with. The Mate RS omits that in the name of symmetry. Bottom line, the screen is fine, but just fine. Good daylight visibility, high resolution, but overall not up to the standards of a luxury handset it's not hard to find a much better viewing experience in a much cheaper phone. What's far more interesting though is what's under that screen. Sure, the Mate RS has a fingerprint scanner around the back, as well as Huawei's excellent face unlocking technology through the 24 megapixel front camera, but in addition to those you get in-display fingerprints, the holy grail of biometrics in a smartphone. Like we saw from Vivo and Synaptics a few months back, this is an optical sensor which lights up your digit through the display itself and then reads the fingerprint. The reality of using it though is very much a mixed bag right now, and in my first few weeks with this phone I've largely ignored it. The in-screen fingerprint sensor is way slower than the capacitive scanner around the back, and less accurate to boot. It also requires pressure to activate, and it's prone to occasional bouts of awkwardness where it'll just refuse to recognise your fingerprint. Right now, in-screen fingerprint is little more than a tech demo. A tech demo of technology that just doesn't work very well yet. When face unlock and the rear fingerprint scanner both function so much better, there's really no reason to use the in-screen option. Like I mentioned earlier, despite its external differences, on the inside the Mate RS is basically a Huawei P20 Pro, and that means just about everything that's great about the P20 also applies to its more expensive cousin. A 4000 mAh battery provides legendary longevity, Huawei's EMUI 8.1 software, though still highly customised, is the most stable and usable it's ever been, and you get arguably the best smartphone camera available thanks to the same Leica branded triple lens setup. Of all the feathers in the Mate RS's cap, the cameras are undoubtedly the most impressive accomplishment. As we saw with the P20 Pro, it's unreal how much detail you get out of the 40 megapixel main shooter in low light, thanks to its pixel binning magic. And for zoom shots, the 8 megapixel 3x telephoto lets you get closer than any other phone camera. 
We're not going to rehash everything from the P20 Pro here, so check out our full review of that phone for a complete rundown of Huawei's new camera tricks and software capabilities. While we're talking software though, it's worth getting into the few cosmetic differences to be found in this Porsche flavoured variant of Android. The Mate RS comes with a particularly ugly Porsche design icon set by default, but you can easily switch this to something less garish using the Themes app. You also get some unique sound effects, and a neat clock widget that uses the Porsche font. Otherwise, this is just Android 8.1 Oreo plus EMUI, just as we saw it from the P20. To sum up an exclusive luxury gadget like the Mate RS, we need to think outside our usual smartphone reviewing box. Of course this thing is not good value for money, it's not supposed to be. You're not getting twice as much phone here compared to a mainstream flagship like the Galaxy S9 Plus, and unless €2,000 is a trivial amount of cash to you, you probably shouldn't buy it. Huawei knows this, Porsche Design knows this, the point of the Mate RS is more to create a halo effect around the Huawei brand than it is to sell phones in large quantities. Those who are in a position to drop two grand on a phone like this will find the innards of a P20 Pro refashioned into a new, flashy, eye-catching form. If only thanks to the shouty PD branding on the front and back. If we're being more practical in our critique, the main differentiators in the Mate RS are mostly misses. The display is demonstrably worse than the P20 Pro, the design itself is more a riff on Samsung's style than anything truly unique, and the inclusion of in-display fingerprint only serves to highlight the immaturity of that technology. To me, the Mate RS is more a wacky science experiment than a fully formed premium handset. It's fun to play with, but when you're paying up to $2600, you should probably expect a product with fewer compromises. That's it for now, be sure to subscribe to Android Central here on YouTube for more on the next wave of Android phones coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.